In 1896, the French scientist Henri Becquerel discovered the phenomenon of radioactivity, initiating research of nuclear physics in many countries around the world. In 1934, Irene and Frederick Curie discovered the phenomenon of artificial radioactivity. In 1938, German scientists Gunn and Strassmann carried out nuclear fission of uranium by neutrons. In 1939, German scientists Lisa Meitner and Otto Frisch confirmed a huge release of energy during the fission of uranium nuclei. In September 1939, Germany invaded Poland and the Second World War began. In 1939, outstanding physicists Leo Schillard, Enrico Fermi, and Albert Einstein, anxious about the possibility of creating an atomic bomb in Germany, sent a letter memorandum to the U.S. President Franklin Roosevelt about the necessity to elaborate an atomic bomb in the United States. In December 1941, U.S. President Roosevelt made a decision to create an atomic bomb. In September 1942, the nuclear project titled Manhattan was launched. General Leslie Grovitz was appointed as the project manager, and Robert Oppenheimer was appointed as the scientific supervisor. Later, enormous human and material resources, about $2 billion, were invested into the project. The outstanding scientists Rudolf Perlis, Otto Frisch, Leo Schillard, Edward Teller and others, altogether 12 Nobel laureates, were invited to participate in the project. In December 1942, under the leadership of Enrico Fermi, the first nuclear reactor was built and the nuclear chain reaction was carried out. In March 1943, a research center in Los Alamos, New Mexico started its work. In January 1944, by decision of the President Roosevelt and British Prime Minister Churchill, a group of scientists from Great Britain arrived in Los Alamos to accelerate work on the creation of an atomic bomb. In March 1944, the Nobel laureate Niels Bohr, in a letter to President of the United States and the British Prime Minister, proposed to inform the Soviet Union about the development of nuclear weapons in order to begin negotiations on control and prevention of the arms race after the end of the war. The proposal was not accepted on the initiative of Churchill. In September 1944, Vannevar Bush and James Conant, members of the U.S. government responsible for the Manhattan Project, in a letter to the name of the U.S. Secretary of Defense Henry Stimson proposed to include the USSR into the nuclear weapons international control system. The offer was not accepted. April 12, 1945, U.S. President Roosevelt died. Vice President Harry Truman became President of the United States. In May 1945, fascist Germany capitulated. On June 16, 1945, the first nuclear explosion with a capacity of 21 kilotons of TNT equivalent was conducted at the Alamo Gordo test site, New Mexico. On May 18, 1945, a conference of the country's winners on the post-war structure of the world was held in Potsdam. Truman told Stalin about creating a new destructive weapon. Stalin calmly responded to this. Truman did not know that due to the powerful intelligence network of the Soviet Union deployed in the United States, Stalin was informed about the Manhattan Project. Truman from Potsdam gave the order to drop atomic bombs on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima, Nagasaki, Kakura, and Niigata. In August 1945, a B-29 bomber with a 15-kiloton uranium bomb with the name Baby, which was dropped on Hiroshima, launched from Tinian Island, Mariana Islands. The city was completely destroyed. According to Japanese data, 150,000 people died. The second plutonium bomb was dropped on August 9, 1945 on Nagasaki. According to Japanese data, 80,000 people were killed. The third atomic bomb bomber was returned to the base from the Pacific Ocean after Truman's direct order, horrified by the scale of civilian casualties. Many people regretted the bombing of Japanese cities. The Vatican immediately condemned the bombing, calling the use of bombs atrocious and disgusting, the hardest blow to Christian civilization and the laws of morality. Most of the scientists involved in the Manhattan Project were against the use of atomic bombs. 
President Truman believed that the use of atomic bombs was a military necessity that saved the lives of hundreds of thousands of Americans, and until the end of his life, he never regretted it. In September 1945, the U.S. Defense Secretary, Henry Stimson, addressed to the President Truman a memorandum on international control of atomic weapons together with the Soviet Union. But the Secretary of State Burns and Navy Commander James Forrestal were against it, believing that the United States should not reveal the secrets of the atomic bomb to other countries. In September 1945, Japan capitulated and the Second World War ended. In September 1945, the administrations of the United States, Great Britain, and Canada appealed to the UN with a proposal to create a UN commission to control atomic energy, control world uranium reserves, industrial atomic enterprises, and scientific research activities. James Conant, one of the initiators of this proposal, believed that the establishment of good relations with the Soviet Union was possible and necessary. But President Truman, at the last moment, appointed Bernard Baruch as chairman of the commission, who adopted radical amendments bypassing the United Nations and preserving the U.S. atomic monopoly, thereby leading the negotiations to a standstill. By the end of the 1930s, the Soviet physicists had great success in studying the processes of nuclear fission. These are well-known Soviet scientists Yov, Kapitsa, Flerov, Kurchatov, Khariton, Zoldovich, and others. At the end of 1941, the Soviet leaders received intelligence information about the work on the uranium project in the United States, Britain, and Germany. In September 1942, the main committee of defense of the Soviet Union adopted a decree on the organization of work on uranium. In February 1943, a new order on the use of uranium energy for military purposes was issued. Laboratory No. 2 of the USSR Academy of Sciences for the Use of Uranium for Military Purposes was established. Igor Kurchatov was appointed as the project supervisor. In August 1945, a government resolution signed by Joseph Stalin to establish a special committee under the State Defense Committee was issued. Lavrenti Beria was appointed as the chairman of this committee. The first main department under the Council of People's Commissars was established. Boris Vanikov was appointed as a head of the first main department. After the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Stalin decided to accelerate the work on the creation of the atomic bomb. The country, ravaged by war, was forced to invest huge financial and human resources in the atomic project. In April 1946, the USSR Council of Ministers decided to set up a Project Bureau No. 11 in the city of Sarov, 400 kilometers southeast of Moscow. Yuli Khariton was appointed as the chief project designer. It was the first nuclear center where the first atomic bomb was created. In December 1946, the uranium graphite reactor first operated in laboratory number two, and a controlled chain reaction of nuclear fission was carried out. In April 1947, a government decree on the construction of a nuclear test site in Semipalyatinsk region was adopted. For four years, the country's atomic industry, capable of creating an atomic bomb, by the enormous efforts of Soviet scientists, engineers, and workers, was developed. On August 29, 1949, the first Soviet atomic bomb was successfully tested. The administrative project manager was Lorenz Berlia, who made a great contribution to the creation of the atomic bomb, who showed an extraordinary talent of organizer. In 1953, he was repressed. Igor Kurchatov was appointed as the project supervisor. The Soviet scientists, Khariton, Zoldovich, Shelkin, Flerov, Klopin and others made great contributions to the creation of the atomic bomb. Some representatives of the Western scientific circles sympathized with the ideas of communism, with the Soviet Union, the first state in the world of workers and peasants who made a decisive contribution to the defeat of Nazi Germany. The Soviet intelligence network has penetrated into many U.S. government and military industrial facilities, as well as the top-secret Manhattan atomic bomb project. Participants of the Manhattan Project, outstanding scientists 
German anti-fascist Klaus Fuchs, American scientist Theodore Hall, David Greenglass, and others selflessly passed the secrets of creating an atomic bomb and the latest technology to the Soviet Union. They believed that a U.S. atomic monopoly was dangerous for the world and that the Soviet Union should possess atomic weapons to counterbalance. This activity accelerated the creation of the Soviet atomic project for a year or two. The first Soviet atomic bomb was a copy of the American one, but this did not detract from the merits of Soviet engineers and scientists who had made the difficult path to creating an atomic bomb. A new era of confrontation and arms race between the USA and the USSR began. After the end of World War II, two superpowers appeared in the world. The United States, which accounted for 60% of world industrial production and up to 80% of world gold reserves, and the Soviet Union, ravaged by war but possessing military power. In Europe, devastated by war, there was a power vacuum as the consequences of the confrontation between the USSR and the USA. Both countries took irreconcilable positions regarding the conflict between the ideologies of communism and capitalism. In February 1946, an American diplomat, George Kennan, accredited in Moscow, sent to Washington a telegram with the call to constrain the Soviet Union. This message grounded the impossibility of developing good relations and cooperation between the two countries, lay on the favorable ground of the supporters of Hardline's policy with Moscow. Years later, Kennan bitterly regretted it. On March 6, 1946, in the city of Fulton, Missouri, Winston Churchill made a speech about the confrontation of East and West and the need to create an Iron Curtain. This was the beginning of the Cold War. In declassified documents of 2014, Churchill proposed to start a war with the Soviet Union, starting from the atomic bombings of Moscow. President Truman, in 1947, adopted the doctrine of deterrence and the fight against communism throughout the world. The United States, possessing the monopoly of atomic weapons, used it as a means of political pressure on other countries, and first of all, on the Soviet Union. In June 1943, by decree of U.S. President Roosevelt, a top-secret center of the National Security Agency called Venona was created. This center worked during the war and in the early years of the Cold War. Venona was engaged in deciphering secret telegrams and telephone conversations of Soviet diplomats. Several hundred specialists, mathematicians, linguists, and analysts worked in the center. The Venona project was the most secret in the United States. Even President Truman and the Central Intelligence Agency did not know about it. This was explained by the fact that the leaders of Venona were afraid of the penetration of Soviet agents into the project. In 1944, agents of American intelligence, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, whose director was Edgar Hoover, illegally infiltrated the Soviet organization Amtorg in New York and stole a large package of documents. The transcript of these documents showed that Soviet agents had infiltrated the government, the Ministry of Defense, industrial facilities, as well as the Manhattan Project. This led to the disclosure of a number of Soviet agents, including Klaus Fuchs, who worked in the Manhattan Project, and others. In February 1948, Soviet agent William Weisband entered the Venona and informed the Soviet intelligence agency of this. Moscow immediately changed the ciphers. Thus, the Venona Project was completed, although the analysts were engaged in deciphering documents for many years. In June 1948, the so-called Berlin Crisis began. After the war, the city of Berlin was divided into western and eastern zones of occupation, west and east Berlin. The Soviet Union closed the rail link between the western zone of occupation of Germany and West Berlin. This led to an aggravation of relations between the USA and the USSR. President Truman said he would send bombers with nuclear weapons to England. The blockade was broken by aircraft. An air bridge was installed with West Berlin. Food and basic necessities to residents of West Berlin were dumped by planes. In September 1948, railway communication was restored by the Soviet Union. 
In 1949, a NATO military bloc was created in Europe, which included the United States, Western Europe, and Turkey. In contrast to NATO, the Soviet Union and its allies were creating a military bloc of the Warsaw Pact countries. Europe in the future became a likely theater of future hostilities. In 1950, American military analysts calculated the forecast of war against the Soviet Union. Despite the atomic bombing, the U.S. will not achieve victory over the Soviet Union and may lose the war. Given the resilience and courage of Soviet soldiers manifested during the war, the ability to wage war in difficult conditions. A month later, the Soviet Union and its allies occupy Western Europe. Six months later, by continuous bombing, incapacitate the main ally of the United States, England, occupy all of Europe and Gibraltar, as well as the countries of the Eastern Mediterranean, including Syria and the entire Middle East. On the Chukotka Peninsula, the 14th Airborne Army is deployed to Alaska, the territory of the United States. American air losses from Soviet air defense and aviation would have been 55%. This cooled the hotheads of the U.S. military. The U.S. was not ready for war, but preparations for war by building nuclear capabilities continued. The next sharp confrontation was the military conflict between North and South Korea in 1950 to 1953. The United States and its allies took part in the war on the side of South Korea, while the Soviet Union provided military assistance to North Korea. China entered the war on the side of North Korea with 300,000th Army and defeated the American troops. The commander of the American forces in Korea, General MacArthur, insisted on nuclear striking on China, but President Eisenhower rejected his proposal. In 1953, a truce was concluded between North and South Korea. In March 1953, Joseph Stalin passed away. His successor, Georgi Malenkov, put forward a proposal for the peaceful coexistence of two systems, socialist and capitalist. By 1953, the U.S. had 1,436 nuclear warheads, and the Soviet Union had 120. The U.S. nuclear potential exceeded the Soviet by almost 12 times. In February 1953, American scientist Robert Oppenheimer gave a speech in New York in which he compared the USA and the USSR like two scorpions in a bottle. Everyone can kill the other, but only risking their lives. The sting of the Soviet scorpion is as deadly as the American sting. In December 1953, President Eisenhower introduced the Atoms for Peace program to the UN General Assembly, which called for the creation of an international atomic energy agency. This was the first step towards the resumption of the Soviet-American dialogue on disarmament. After lengthy negotiations between the U.S. and the USSR, the charter of the IAEA was adopted by the New York Conference and signed by 70 states. On June 29, 1957, the charter entered into force. It was a big step forward taken by the United States and the USSR for control over the limitation of nuclear weapons and disarmament, which showed its effectiveness. The next peak of confrontation between two nuclear powers arose in 1962 during the so-called Caribbean Crisis. In 1959, after the Cuban Socialist Revolution, there was a threat of military intervention in Cuba by the United States. Cuban leader Fidel Castro appealed to the Soviet Union for help. The ratio of nuclear potential of the USSR to the United States was 1 to 17. In summer 1962, Soviet leader Nikita Khrushchev secretly deployed in Cuba launchers for medium-range missiles able to reach the U.S. territory, as well as tactical nuclear weapons and IL-28 aircraft with six atomic bombs. The 40,000th Soviet garrison was deployed in Cuba. The number of Cuban troops reached 250,000 people. In addition, submarines with nuclear torpedoes were sent to the shores of Cuba. The U.S. military leadership did not realize the scale of the threat from Cuba and in October 1962 insisted on a military invasion of Cuba. In the event of a U.S. invasion of Cuba, the risk of a nuclear strike against the United States increased. According to forecasts, 
this could lead to the death of about 100 million people, including 80 million Americans. The world was on the edge of a nuclear catastrophe. October 28, 1962, the leadership of the United States and the USSR, as a result of intensive negotiations, came to a mutual agreement on the following conditions. The USSR withdraws nuclear weapons from Cuba. The United States gives guarantees of non-aggression in Cuba, displays Jupiter ballistic missiles from the U.S. base in Turkey against the European part of the USSR. The Caribbean crisis was the most acute crisis in the history of mankind in the 20th century. In 1960, at the initiative of the United States and Germany, it was planned to form multilateral nuclear forces in NATO opposite to the Warsaw Pact countries. In 1964, due to disagreements between Germany, France, and England, the project was closed. By the early 1970s, an approximate parity of nuclear potential between the USSR and the USA was achieved, a series of agreements on the limitation and reduction of nuclear weapons OSV-1, OSV-2 between the USSR and the US were concluded. In connection with the introduction of Soviet troops in Afghanistan in 1979, the political situation in the world sharply deteriorated. The Cold War escalated again. In 1979, President Carter signed Directive No. 59 for a nuclear strike on the Soviet Union, primarily on Moscow. In the early 1980s, the leadership of the Soviet Union made a mistake by deploying the medium-range missiles RSD-10 Pioneer in Europe, according to the Western classification SS-20. In response, the United States and NATO deployed Pershing-2 medium-range missiles and Tomahawk land-based cruise missiles in Europe. The flight time of the missiles to Moscow was seven minutes. The situation became critical. The Soviet military created the Parameter or Dead Hand Retaliatory Strike Program. In the event of the death of the Soviet leadership after a nuclear strike on Moscow, a group of officers who were in a protected bunker in the Urals launched rockets from the Kasputin Yar test site in the Orenburg region. These missiles signal the remaining carriers of nuclear weapons to automatically launch a strike on U.S. territory. The perimeter program, or the Doomsday Machine, was put on combat duty in 1984. Unfortunately, the United States did not have information about this program. The risk of a retaliatory strike would probably reduce the severity of the confrontation between the superpowers. In 1985, when Mikhail Gorbachev came to power in the USSR, the world changed. In 1987, an agreement on the elimination of short-range and medium-range missiles was signed in Washington. In 1991, an agreement on the reduction and limitation of strategic nuclear weapons was signed in Moscow. The Cold War was over. According to experts, during the Cold War, a top-secret center coordinating the activities of Western intelligence agencies was created. The activity of the center was aimed at the destruction of the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union, due to the planned economy in terms of gross domestic product growth, was twice as high as the capitalist countries. The Soviet Union, possessing rich natural resources, could become a powerful economic rival on the world market. Foreign agents introduced by Western intelligence agencies into the leadership of the Communist Party, the government and intelligence services of the Soviet Union, worked to undermine the communist ideology that united the national republics to falsify the history of the Soviet Union. The imperfection of the Soviet constitution was used. This is the right of the republics to self-determination up to secession from the USSR. In the 1970s, a dissident movement was created in the USSR. In the late 1980s, miners' strikes were organized in Russia and Kazakhstan to destabilize the situation. National fronts were created to incite national conflicts in the republics. In 1991, there was an August coup in Moscow, and as a result, the collapse of the Soviet Union in December 1991, when the leaders of Russia, Ukraine, and Belarus terminated the Union Treaty. Thank you. 
On February 12, 1989, during a planned underground nuclear test at the Semipolyatins test site, there was a leakage of radioactive gases to the ground. The radioactive cloud covered the village of Chagan, where a division of strategic aviation was stationed. The division commander, Major General Pavel Bredikhin, concerned about the consequences of the tests, informed the first secretary of the Semipolyatinsk Regional Committee, Keshrim Bostayev, about this. On February 20, 1989, Keshrim Bostayev sent a top-secret cipher telegram to Mikhail Gorbachev, the secretary general of the CPSU Central Committee, demanding a reduction in the frequency of nuclear tests at the Semipolyatinsk test site and further dislocation of the test site to another place. It was the first document demanding the cessation of nuclear tests, which became one of the starting points of the anti-nuclear movement in the Soviet Union. On February 28th, a government commission to study the situation at the Semipolyatinsk Proving Ground on the instructions of Secretary General Mikhail Gorbachev arrived in Kazakhstan. On February 28, 1989, a rally was held in Alma-Ata to stop nuclear testing, where the famous Kazakh poet Olja Suleymenov made a speech, where a decision was made to create the international anti-nuclear movement Nevada Semipolyatinsk. On August 29, 1991, the president of Kazakhstan, Nur Sultan Nazarbayev, signed a decree on closing the Semipolyatinsk test site. In December 1991, the Soviet Union collapsed. Kazakhstan inherited from the USSR the fourth nuclear potential in the world. The same year, Kazakhstan voluntarily refused of the nuclear arsenal. On May 23, 1992, Kazakhstan signed the Lisbon Protocol to the START-1 Treaty, in which it recorded its obligations on the non-proliferation of nuclear weapons. Long-term nuclear tests at the Semipolyatinsk test site damaged the health of the population living near the test site and the environment. Tens of thousands of people suffered from nuclear tests. Hundreds of thousands were exposed to nuclear tests. The government of Kazakhstan had developed a program for the rehabilitation and social protection of the population affected by the tests. On the initiative of Keshrim Bostayev, on December 18, 1992, the Parliament of Kazakhstan adopted a law on the social protection of citizens affected by nuclear tests at the Semipolyatinsk test site. The law provided for the right of citizens to compensation for damage to their health and the right to retire for men 50 to 55 years of age, for women 45 to 50 years of age. In 1994, Kazakhstan completed the export of nuclear weapons to Russia. In May 1995, the last nuclear charge was destroyed at the Semipolyatinsk test site. In 1999, in Kazakhstan, all mine installations for ballistic missiles were destroyed. On September 8, 2006, in Semipolyatinsk, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, and Turkmenistan signed an agreement on the establishment of a nuclear-free zone in Central Asia. Kazakhstan, with its scientific potential and raw material base, could become nuclear weapons producer and enter the nuclear club. After abandoning nuclear weapons, Kazakhstan pursues an active policy on non-proliferation and prohibition of nuclear weapons worldwide. In 1992, by the decree of the President of Kazakhstan, Nur Sultan Nazarbayev, the National Nuclear Center was established on the basis of the former Semipolyatinsk test site in the city of Kurchatov, which studies the effects of nuclear testing, problems of disposal, and disposal of nuclear waste. The structure of the National Nuclear Center includes the following institutions. IRSE, Institute of Radiation Safety and Ecology, was established in 1992. The main direction is radioecology and radiation monitoring of the region where nuclear tests were carried out, the recultivation of radiation-contaminated areas of the former Semipolyatinsk test site. The most dangerous tests of ground and air tests were conducted in 1949 to 1963 at the experimental field site, 
August 29, 1949, September 24, 1951, August 12, 1953, August 24, 1953, August 24, 1956, August 7, 1962. Radioactive contamination is not limited to the test site, but extends beyond it and covers the territory of Russia, part of Novosibirsk, Kemerova regions, and the Altai territory. Laboratory analysis of samples conducted by the Institute at the test site showed the presence of radionuclides, cesium, strontium, plutonium, and tritium in the soil. In the 1990s, the Institute, together with Russian experts, conducted an assessment of the radio-ecological situation. In 1993 to 1994, the Institute, together with the IAEA mission, which included representatives from the United States, France, and the United Kingdom, also carried out an assessment of the radiation situation in the settlements adjacent to the test site and the possible radiation doses to residents of these areas. In the final document, it was noted that the gamma emission power of environmental pollution is close to the global level. In some areas, a slight excess was observed, but it is insignificant and does not pose a danger to the local population. The Institute of Atomic Energy was established in 1992. The Institute is engaged in research into the effects of severe accidents on light water reactors. The Institute works within the framework of international projects on the safety of nuclear reactors. Kormit, Japan, Toshiba, Fukushima, Japan, Toshiba, Eagle, Japan, Saiga, France, Maxima, Belgium, Conversion, the U.S. The Baikal-1 complex is located on the former Semipolyatinsk proving ground at a distance of 65 kilometers from the city of Korchatov. The complex has two research reactors. The reactor IVG-1M was commissioned in 1975. Testing of the active cores of nuclear jet engines, YARD, was carried out here. The reactor RA, created on the basis of the design of the bench prototype YARD, the reactor IRGIT, was put into operation in 1987. Since 1998, it is on conservation. The research reactor complex, IGR, is located next to the former test site, Experimental Field. IGR Graphite Research Reactor, one of the oldest in the world since 1961, studies the dynamics of impulse reactors were conducted here. Since 1992, research has been carried out on fuel and structural materials of reactor installations, as well as nuclear rocket engine nuclear propulsion systems. Currently, in-reactor studies are being conducted on the safety of fast neuron reactors under contracts with Japan and France. Created by Kazakhstani and Russian scientists participating in the project of creating an international ITER reactor for the development of controlled thermonuclear fusion technologies for research in plasma physics and solving problems in materials science, developing units and elements of reactor chambers. Kazakhstan Tokamak is one of the most promising projects in Kazakhstan. The launch of the Tokamak is scheduled for 2019.